Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 22 of the chapter States of Matter. In part 21, I told you about the behavior of real gases and their, the reasons why they deviate from ideal behavior. Now, I also introduced the concept of Z, that is the compressibility factor. I would like to elaborate on the compressibility factor in this video. We know that the ideal gas equation is PV is equal to NRT. So let us say PV has a value of 20 and NRT would also have a value of 20 if the gas is ideal because PV is equal to NRT. So the ratio of PV over NRT would be equal to 1 because 20 upon 20 would be 1. So this ratio is known as Z or the compressibility factor. So Z, that is compressibility factor, is equal to PV, that is the ratio of PV upon NRT. For an ideal gas, this ratio should be equal to 1. But we find that gases are not ideal, they are real, and they deviate from ideal behavior. And if they deviate from ideal behavior, in the case of real gases, PV is not equal to NRT. And if it's not equal to NRT, if PV is larger than NRT, then the value of Z would be greater than 1. And if NRT is greater than PV, then the value of Z would be less than 1. So we say that for real gases, the ratio PV upon NRT or the compressibility factor is not equal to 1. Look at this graph now. We have plotted compressibility factor along the y-axis and we are plotting it against pressure in bars along the x-axis. And these are different gases which have been taken at a certain temperature and we are trying to uh, plot the compressibility factors of these gases against varying pressure. As you go on increasing pressure, what happens? So what do we see when we look at this graph? we find that the compressibility factor of all gases at very, very low pressures, that is approximately equal to zero or negligible pressures, is one. If the gas is ideal, the compressibility factor should have a value of one. So we find all gases do have that, they, they do have that ideal behavior when the pressure is almost zero. So at that point, they all show a pressure, uh, sorry, a compressibility factor of one. But as we go on increasing the pressure, we notice that some of these gases, they show positive deviation straight. Some of these may show negative deviation for a certain range of pressure, reach a minimum. Do you see this red has a minimum here, the green has a minimum here, and this red has a lower minimum. So the red is carbon dioxide. I've named these according to uh, the color to make it easy for you to understand. Methane then has the minimum which is higher than carbon dioxide. Oxygen has a minimum which is higher than methane. And then hydrogen showed continuous positive deviation, while nitrogen moved along the ideal gas line, that is the value of one for a certain range, and then started showing positive deviation. We would like to understand this graph better now. Think logically that when is it that a real gas would show ideal behavior? In the previous video, I told you that there were two faulty assumptions in the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The first was that it assumed that there are no intermolecular interactions in the, uh, in the gases. And second was that the volume occupied by the molecules of a gas are negligible in comparison to the volume of the, uh, of the gas on the whole. So if we could actually achieve these conditions where the volume would be negligible, of the molecules would be negligible, how would it be possible if we increase the volume so much that the volume actually in comparison becomes negligible? If we increase the volume of the gas so much, we expand it so much that those molecules now are actually negligible. That is when that gas will behave ideally. 
or the second was that there should be no intermolecular interactions. Again, if you increase the volume so much, the molecules are far apart and if they are far apart, they cannot interact with each other, they cannot experience the attractions. Therefore, it is possible to make gases behave ideally by adjusting, adjusting their pressure and temperature and volume conditions. So we say, sorry, real gases show ideal behavior when conditions of temperature and pressure are such that the intermolecular forces are negligible. That is the aim. If you can somehow make the intermolecular forces negligible, the gas would behave ideally. So at very low pressures, we find that Z has a value of zero, uh, sorry, has a value of one. That is, compressibility factor is approximately equal to 1 and therefore, at very, very low pressures, all gases behave as ideal gases. And at high pressures, if you notice, when the pressure is high, all of them are showing at around 800 bar pressure, we find all gases, they show positive deviation from uh, the ideal gas, uh, that is the compressibility factor value for an ideal gas. And at intermediate pressures, we find that these gases, they show negative deviation. So we find that at almost zero pressure, it, they behave ideally. Then they start dipping and reach a minimum. And then they start increasing. At, and at very high pressures, they simply cross the uh, line for the ideal gas and show positive deviation. Thus, gases show ideal behavior when volume is large and forces are negligible. I explained this to you that if volume is very large, the molecules, the distance between molecules increases and since the distance increases, intermolecular forces or attractions are almost negligible and that is when they would show ideal behavior. Up to what pressure will a gas behave ideally would depend on its nature and temperature. Now there are two things that de decide whether a gas would behave ideally over a certain range of pressure or up to what pressure. Did you notice that nitrogen, I told you that all these curves were plotted at a certain temperature, but the gases that were taken at that temperature were different. So we found that at whatever temperature this was, nitrogen was the gas which showed for a maximum range of pressure the curve coincided with the ideal gas curve that is it uh, the compressibility factor where the value of compressibility factor is one so nitrogen for an appreciable range of pressure till almost let us say a hundred bar pressure it showed ideal behavior over a range of pressure at that temperature so it means, but the other gases did not show that. So we say up to what range of pressure would gases show that ideal gas behavior would depend on their nature, what is the nature of the gas, and it would depend on the temperature at which we are plotting these curves. It is possible to change the temperature and find that instead of nitrogen, it is hydrogen which is showing a greater range of pressure where it shows ideal gas behavior. It is possible for each gas that temperature would be different. Now this temperature at which a particular gas shows ideal gas behavior for an appreciable range of pressure is known as the boil point or the boil temperature. So what do you understand from this? That there is a certain temperature just like you have boiling points and melting points for liquids similarly for gases this is a fixed temperature at which the gas will show ideal behavior for an appreciable range of pressure that is for a lot for a little while it will keep coinciding from zero as you keep increasing the pressure it would coincide with the ideal gas uh, value of z that is one the compressibility factor value of one so we say the temperature at which real gas obeys ideal gas law over an appreciable range of pressure is called boil point or boil temperature. It's called boil point or boil temperature. Above the boil point, gases show Z to be less than 1. And below 
they show negative deviation. I would like to bring your attention back to this. If you are plotting the curve at the boiling point, um, above the boil point of a gas, if you're plotting a curve above the boil point, the gas would show positive deviation, which we observed in the case of hydrogen, right? In the case of hydrogen, the boil point of hydrogen is less than whatever the temperature we had taken. I'm not going into the uh, specific values of the boil point here. You just need to understand because hydrogen right from the beginning showed positive deviation. So if you if the boil point if is less than or you are carrying out the readings at a temperature higher than the boil point, then the gas would show positive deviation throughout. It would not coincide with the ideal gas uh, value for an appreciable range of pressure. Right from the beginning, it will show positive deviation. But if you are carrying out the readings at temperatures which are below the boil point of a certain gas, here we find that we are carrying out these readings at the boil point of nitrogen because that is the gas which showed uh, the value of one for an appreciable range of pressure. But these three gases, that is oxygen, methane and carbon dioxide, these for these the boil point was greater than the value at which the, we were calculating these, uh, at which we were plotting these curves. So what do we find? We find they show negative deviation. Instead of showing, um, moving along with the curve of ideal gas, they immediately dip and they show negative deviation till they reach a minimum as we keep on increasing the pressure. And then once they hit the minimum, after that, when you keep on increasing the pressure, the value keeps on increasing until it becomes positive at a certain pressure where it's completely crosses the uh, value of one that is the ideal gas curve and shows total positive deviation. Let me just read what I had written out. Above boil point, gases show Z greater than one. If you're carrying out the reading uh, at, um, if you're plotting the curves at Z greater than one, they would show positive deviation. And below, if you take the, the, if you're carrying out the readings below it, then first they would show negative deviation of Z till it reaches a minimum value and then on increasing pressure, the value of Z keeps on increasing after the minimum has been reached. So it continuously increases from there. So what do we conclude from this discussion? That gases can, show, all gases can show ideal behavior. If we keep in mind the boil point, we keep in mind the pressure. If the pressure is very low and the temperature is high, that is when the intermolecular forces would be negligible and that is when the, uh, the gases would start behaving ideally. There is this one derivation where, which tells you compressibility factor in terms of the volumes of real gases and ideal gases. Let's just look at this uh, derivation too. We know for a real gas, how would you calculate compressibility factor? Compressibility factor is the ratio of PV upon NRT. Since we are taking a real gas, PV, V would be V real, that is volume of the real gas. So let us write PV real, the volume of the real gas, upon NRT is the compressibility factor of a real gas. We know the ideal gas equation is PV is equal to NRT. Here, when we talk of V, we are talking of V ideal. That is the volume of the ideal gas. So PV is equal to NRT when the volume is ideal. The volume is that of an ideal gas. So you remember I told you about the volume correction in the previous video. I would uh, request you to move back to the previous video if you do not remember and watch it to understand this. That the volume of an ideal gas is different from the volume of a real gas. So V ideal, the volume of the ideal gas is uh, PV would be equal to uh, NRT. So V ideal from this would be equal to NRT, take P down here. So it would be equal to NRT upon P. Now look at this equation. We have K 
keep V real on one side, you have P upon NRT. And what is V ideal? V ideal is the uh, inverse of this. It is NRT upon P. So we can substitute this, this uh, value into this equation. And what do we get? When you substitute it in this equation, we get Z would be equal to V real remains as such and NRT upon P. So that becomes V ideal. So what do we see from this? That compressibility factor is actually a ratio of the volumes of the real gas to the volume if the gas was ideal. So compressibility factor can be reported in terms of the volumes of the real gas and if the same gas was ideal. So we say Z can be defined as the ratio of actual molar volume of a gas to its volume if it were ideal. So this was about compressibility factor. In the next video, I'll be telling you about liquefaction of gases. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.